2023 Decatur Baptist Church. So glad that you decided to come join us today, or that you're joining us there on the internet. We're happy to see uh, how many people came today. Very, very looking crowd. Why don't we all stand if you would? Here's a song we're going to sing. Take your songbooks, number 307. And this song emphasizes our ability and our privilege to get the gospel to the world. Send the light. That's our job. Let's sing the first verse and the second verse and the last verse. 307. There's a call comes ringing on the restless waves. Send the light. Send the light. There are souls to rescue. There are souls to sing it out. Send the light. Send the light. Send the light. The blessing gospel. Good to have you here this morning. Let's pray. Dear Lord, our heavenly gracious Father, Lord, you are so good. You meet every need, Lord. And I know that each and every one here this morning that knows you as their personal Savior is thankful that someone brought the light to them and showed them the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, I just pray now that you bless our missions conference. Be with each and every speaker throughout our conference, Lord. Fill them with your spirit. I pray our hearts are prepared to receive that which you would have for us, Lord. May we be obedient to your word. May we become more like Christ for the time that we spend in your service this morning. For in Christ's name I pray. Amen. Amen. You can be seated. Let's go to number 195, please. 195. Nothing but the blood. We'll sing the first, the second, and the last verse. Number 195.
soon actually. We're going to have him go ahead and come at this time. And uh, I don't know if you're familiar too much with my illustrious career in college. I was there about eight years or so. But toward the beginning, uh, Brother Daniel Williams was actually there. So I remember the face and I remember the name. You know what I'm saying? In a college of about 2,000 people. But uh, we got to catch up last night a little bit as I picked him up at the airport. It's about an hour and 50 minute drive to Columbus. So we got to understand each other a little bit better. But uh, he has been in China. I'll let you tell him, him tell you about it. But uh, this is a guy who's been there and has seen people saved on, the, on a foreign field, dealt with the culture shock and all of the uh, difficulties that can go into that. And we praise the Lord for this family. Why don't you welcome him if you would? All right. Well, glad to be here today. Enjoy the nice, crisp air. Uh, being from Texas, uh, let's see. So I was in Texas yesterday morning, and, and the mornings are a little cooler. Um, you know, but not, not as nice and crisp as it is this morning. That was just invigorating. So I really enjoy that. So again, uh, I mentioned I'm from Texas. And uh, anybody here from Texas? Nobody? Anybody visit Texas? Okay. A bunch of you. Everybody here knows how to tell if somebody's from Texas, right? You don't have to. They'll tell you. Yes. They will. <laughs> yes, they will. yes they will. So I'm one of those proud to be from Texas Texans. I've got my wife here. I'll have her stand real quick. This is my wife, Mary Ann. Uh, our four children are in Texas. Uh, they're with their grandparents, uh, getting lots of extra schoolwork done and things. I'm sure. Uh, but we do have wonderful pictures of uh, of our children here on our prayer card. So please stop by, get a prayer card, check out our display. Uh, if our video is ready, I think we'll go ahead and watch the video as kind of an introduction a little bit, and then I'll come back and flesh out and give you some more information. The Philippines, a country with over 7,500 islands and a population of over 110 million, a country of oceanside, mountains, and natural beauty, a country where 8% of the population profess to be Catholic and nearly 10% profess to be Muslim. A country which is very hospitable and friendly, especially towards Americans. While this country and its people are wide open to the gospel, my wife grew up and lived there for 14 years and never once heard a clear presentation of the gospel. This has been my experience in both of my visits to the Philippines. I could walk up and speak to nearly anyone, and they would listen to the gospel which they had never heard before. We are the Williams family, and we are answering the need of the Philippines by going to spread the gospel, disciple converts, and train soul winners and Filipino Christians to further the gospel. God has prepared us for this throughout our lives. While I was saved at an early age, I did not surrender my life to missions until I actually visited the country of Guatemala in my first year of Bible college. This visit broke my heart with the need for foreign missions and showed me both the need and the openness to the gospel which exists in many countries around the world. I was fortunate to be able to take two more missions trips as a student, including one to the Philippines, where again I saw the great need for the gospel. I met my wife at Bible College, and after graduating and getting married, God sent us to the northeast of Communist China in 2004. We worked undercover alongside some other American missionaries and a Chinese pastor seeing many souls saved, people baptized, and lives transformed. While seeing many Chinese people come to Christ, after a few years, God brought us into contact with the Philippine community of foreign workers in our city of six million. Due to Chinese government regulations, we could have an international church more openly, and so we started one in April of 2008. God blessed this work with more souls saved, people baptized, and new converts becoming soul owners themselves. In October of 2010, God brought us back to the States, but he had raised up a Filipino man to pastor this work. In 2018, God began working in my heart, preparing us to return to the mission field. We visited the Philippines in 2019, sealing our decision to serve him in the Philippines on the island of Negros Oriental in the city of Dumaguete a city with a population of 134,000. 
We plan to work with Pastor Randy DeMobile, a veteran missionary of 10 years who has started a Bible college training Philippine nationals for Christ's service. We are looking forward to serving God there in the Philippines, and we ask that you will consider partnering with us prayerfully and financially as we go. I do assure you that skinny guy in the picture was me. <laughs> <laughs> It was just 23 years ago, so when I visited the Philippines for the first time. But uh, so I'll go back to the beginning a little bit. Again, I'm from, from Texas, and uh, I was born and raised in a church that reached out with the gospel. Uh, I can remember as just a little boy uh, going on Thursday morning, lady soul winning with my mom, even before I went to, went to uh, school. And then on Saturdays, I can remember going on uh, bus visitation with my father. He drove a little white 28 passenger bus and he would pick up children and teenagers and families and bring them to church. And I can remember going with him on Saturday and, and visiting homes and uh, homes and inviting folks to church. And uh, so again, it was a church that, that reached out with the gospel. And so even from just a very early age, I heard the gospel regularly uh, in the nursery, in the Sunday school classes and things. But on July 12, 1981, as a second grade boy, I'm so thankful to my Sunday school teacher, Brother Granham. He was a retired Marine. And while he was older and retired and, and, uh, and things, he didn't just say, well, I'm going to keep my pew warm. At some point, he went to the pastor and said, Pastor, is there some way that I could serve? Is there anything that I could do to help around the church? And the pastor looked at him and he said, could you teach a Bible story to little boys? And he said, I can do that. And I'm so thankful to that man for doing that because that Sunday morning, he gave the Sunday school lesson. And at the end of the lesson, he, he said, now boys, is there anyone here who today who, you know, one of these days you're gonna die. And when you die, do you know for sure that you have your heaven as your home? And that Sunday morning, again, I had heard the gospel many times before, but that Sunday morning, it clicked. And I realized that I, Daniel, needed Jesus Christ as my Savior for me. It wasn't just enough that my mom was a believer. It, was, uh, it wasn't just enough that my father was a believer. It wasn't just enough that I tried to be a good boy. It wasn't just enough that I went to church. It was I needed to receive the gift of salvation and trust in Jesus Christ as my savior for myself. And I raised my hand and he took his Bible and showed me in the Bible what God says, how that I could receive Christ as my savior. <coughs> and I, I received Christ as my savior that morning and, and was baptized that night. But if there happens to be anyone here in this room today who, you know, maybe you go to church faithfully, Maybe you try to be a good person, but if there's never been that specific time and place in your life, and, and maybe you don't remember the date. Uh, you know, I had to take a calendar out and go back and figure it out a couple of years later. But there, you should remember the time and, you know, just what was going on, who was around you, what was going on. There's, there's got, a spiritual birth in Christ as an event. Yeah. It's not something that, oh, I'm, I'm just, I'm a Christian because I've always been a Christian. Yeah. You know, so many belief systems in the world, if I walked up to them and said, when did you become uh, a Muslim? When did you become these different belief systems? They would just say, most of the people would say, I was born this way. Yeah. And Christians are born that way, but it's a spiritual birth that's an event where we choose Christ. Amen. Um, and so, and for me, that's how I came to Christ. My wife, on the other hand, the video mentioned she never even heard the gospel the first 14 years of her life. It just, it just, the gospel never crossed her path. And her family, as a family unit, moved to the Los Angeles region of California when she was 14. And they, you know, started getting adjusted to America and things. And when she was 18 years old, uh, she had a cousin named Kathy who was living with them for a little while. And Kathy went out shopping, and there was a lady from a church in Los Angeles, again, a church that was reaching out with the gospel. Thank the Lord for churches that reach out with the gospel. Yeah. And thank the Lord for individuals 
It's not just the church's responsibility, it's each individual Christian's responsibility to shine the light of the gospel of Christ in a dark, dark world. And that lady met Kathy on the sidewalk in front of that school and invited her to a, a church activity. It was an evangelistic activity where they would do some fun and games and food and things, and then they would present the gospel to them. And she invited Kathy uh, to come. And Kathy didn't come that first time, but that lady happened to get their home phone number. Uh, it was before the days of internet and email and social media and cell phones and all that stuff. And so just getting a home phone number was all she could really do. So Kathy didn't come the first time, but that lady called back. Hmm. She called her and invited her for the, for the second week. And Kathy didn't come the second week, but that lady called back a third week. And Kathy didn't come the third week, but that lady called back a fourth week. And Kathy didn't come the fourth week, but that lady called back a fifth week, and a sixth week, and a seventh week, and an eighth week. And finally, Kathy turns to Marianne and says, Marianne, I met this lady two months ago. And while she was polite and friendly, she just won't leave me alone. She was persistent. And why was that lady persistent? Because she cared about Kathy's right. soul. And Kathy said to Marianne, she said, you know, uh, I've never been to a Christian church before. And, and, and I don't know how to behave or act or dress or, or things like that. But if you'll go with me, then, then I'll go. And, you know, sometimes people that we invite to church, they're not necessarily, and they say no, they're not necessarily rejecting the church. Some of them might be like that. They just, they're nervous. They don't know what to expect and they don't know how to behave and things. And so Marion said, well, sure, we'll go ahead and we'll try it out. And so they came and they heard the gospel for the first time in their life. And it was very new to them. Again, uh, just the belief system that they had been raised in, you know, it's all based on, can I be good enough? Can I do these rituals? Can I do all of these? And when I die, I hope God's in a good mood. And maybe he'll let me go to heaven. And, and hearing that they could trust in the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ for salvation was very new to them. And neither one of them trusted Christ that first time. But when they left, they said, you know what, let's go back. There was something there. Yeah. And that something there was the truth of the word of God, and it was the love of Jesus Christ Amen. expressed through the believers. And when a visitor comes here, I would hope that they would, that they would see and hear and feel those same two things. And so they ended up going back. And it took a little time to work through. But after about two months, my wife came to Christ. And a little bit longer after that, Kathy came to Christ. And as a result of, yes, a church reaching out with the gospel, but an individual in the church reaching out with the gospel, almost my wife's entire family has come to Christ. Amen. And I'm so thankful to them. You know, my, again, I was raised in a church that reached out with the gospel. And so I came to Christ at an earlier time in my life. And in a crowd this size, I'm sure that there are people like that. But I'm sure also in a crowd this size, there are more folks like my wife as well who came to Christ at a later time. But you know what? God put us together, and he has used us, is using us, and will use us. And God wants to use you if you'll just let him. It's good. He, he has a plan and a purpose for each one of us. And uh, so we got the video mentioned um, getting married, and then God sent us to China. And that was, that was amazing. You know, in China, you can't walk down the street and pass out a tract. You can't knock on somebody's door and invite them to church and give them a tract. You, you, you know, you can't just even really leave tracts laying around because if they caught who was doing it, you'd be kicked out of the country. There, there are some things that, that there are definitely restrictions on liberty, uh, on religious liberties and freedoms. But you can witness to people. Uh, you, you, you do have to be careful and appropriate, but as long as it's in a private setting, uh, speaking to an individual or a very small group, you could do that. Uh, and so while we were in China, we were able to witness and see people saved. You know, um, I've got other stories and maybe tonight at the dinner, if you sit next to us, I can tell you some more, but I'll just, I'll just tell you one quick story um, of how it was common in China. Of course, I kind of stood out. I'm not, uh, <laughs> I'm not Chinese and I'm not short. And so often Chinese people who wanted to learn English, uh, wanted to practice their English would approach me. And of course, 
since they're wanting to practice their English, they're very friendly and things. And I also taught English classes at, at some different schools, and so I had students that would want to spend time with me and things. But one time, my wife and I were out shopping. And of course, they walked a, a, a young lady who was uh, probably a freshman or sophomore in college uh, studying English, came up with her mom and approached us and was very friendly. And so my wife said, you know what, we go shopping here. How about next week, I'll let my husband do the shopping and uh, we'll go over to KFC and have some chicken and chat and uh, things. And so they planned that and the next Saturday they did that. And my wife brought a translator, it was newer on it, uh, we had only been there a shorter time, and she didn't have really good Chinese at that time, but we had a Chinese, uh, some Chinese Christians that we worked with that could help translate. And so uh, my wife was able to witness to that daughter and her mother, and uh, they both had ended up accepting Christ as their Savior. And uh, we had a Chinese pastor with an underground church, and we were able to assist them into attending that underground church. Uh, and But that's not the end of the story. It, it's every summer when she would come home from college, she would, you know, kind of reconnect with us. And, and we ended up inviting them to our home once or twice. And they would invite us to their home and teach my wife how to make some Chinese uh, uh, foods and, and dishes and things like that. Well, the first time we went to their house, I, again, my Chinese was still limited. And I brought a, tra a translator with me to make sure that I could could speak correctly and I witnessed to the father and he politely did not receive Christ as Savior but when we left the translator said did you know that he's a member of the Chinese Communist Party and I'm like I didn't <laughs> and because not everybody in China is a member of the party it's only the members of the actual party who actually get to vote and, and have the power and it is forbidden by law for any of those Chinese Communist Party members to actually have a belief that's outside of communism. Uh, they, they have to, you know, and if they get caught, like, oh, they became a Christian or something, they could be put in jail or even potentially executed because they represent the ruling class of China. And so he was, you know, I was, I was nervous, but, but nothing, nothing happened. Uh, and over the time, over the years, uh, we knew them for maybe about four years. And over the years, I, I, would, I went ahead and just witnessed to them again as the Holy Spirit gave opportunity. And when we knew we were coming back to China, to America at, in uh, October of 2010, we, we met with them one final time, maybe about three or four weeks before our airplane left. And I met with them again, and by then my Chinese was much better and I could witness to them just myself. And, and I talked to them and just very, you know, your wife and daughter have received Christ as Savior. Wouldn't you like to be in heaven with them? And, and just witness to him, very, just very heartfelt. And he received Christ as Savior. Amen. Amen. And that wouldn't have happened if people hadn't sent us. And, I, and there's many other stories, but that's just one story of how a family, and they, of course, China had the one child policy, so that was the entire family just a mom, a dad, and, and one daughter. And those, there's many, many other stories. I saw that you, you support missionaries, and it's in the bulletin there. Thank you for supporting missionaries. Yeah. There are so many stories like that that you just, you'll never hear this side of heaven. Yeah. It's just, there's too many stories to put them in the prayer letters, and too many stories to put them in the updates and things. There's too many wonderful, wonderful stories that we will just never hear until until heaven. But you know what? You're, you're only a part of that if you're participating. You know, are, are you participating in sending the missionaries? Are you participating in partnering with the missionaries by you reaching out to your local area? You know, your, your missionaries are representing you reaching whatever country they're in, but you're representing them reaching your local area. And that's a partnership. Um, again, the video mentions some of that. We came back in 2010 with some medical situations with one of our children, and it took, it took a long time to work through that. But thank the Lord, he brought us through that. And in 2018, he said, you know what, Daniel? You remember that call to missions in May of 1998? And I said, yes, Lord, I do. He said, you know what, it's time to be looking at, looking at heading back out. Sure. China is, uh, 
I don't have time right now to elaborate on that, but just China is much more closed now than it was when we were there from 2004 to 2010. And so God has directed us to the Philippines, but you know what, he reminded me, he said, I gave you a Filipino wife, she's from the Philippines, she speaks the language, she has dual citizenship, and all of your children have dual citizenship. Uh, you pastored that Filipino church there, it was an international church, but it was 90% Filipino there in China for two and a half years, and I set things up in your life to prepare you for the future that I have for you. And so we're headed there to Negros Island, to Dumaguete City, there's a missionary there, he started a Bible college, training nationals, because really it's, uh, it's through training nationals so that they can help with church planning. One, one or two missionaries can only start so many churches and can only go so far, but it's through reaching the nationals, training them so that they can help in planning churches. And that's our goal. We're leaving next month, right after Thanksgiving. We're excited to be going, and we're trusting God to raise the last little bit of our support. Thank you for this time. That's good. Amen. We appreciate that. Praise the Lord for working in people's lives. That's a big lead right there, what you heard about. Let's all stand if you would, please. Everybody standing. You can. Number 299 in your songbooks. 299. Praise the Lord for men who are willing to say, you know what? Let's go and make us be perishing. Let's do the first, the third, and the last verse on this one, if you would. Sing with us. Number 299. Perishing, care for the dying, snatch the divinity from sin and the grave. We for the erring one, lift up the fallen, tell them of Jesus the mighty to save. Rescue the perishing, care for the dying, Jesus is merciful. Who will go for us? How about me, Lord? Why don't you send me? Listen to the words. Here am I, Lord.
come down to our missions conference. I appreciate you being here. Let me just put a plug in for the rest of the week, if you would. And folks, I know some of you have things you normally do. You have activities. You have even responsibilities. But listen, you're going to be blessed if you come out in the evenings. Our missions conference is tonight, 6 o'clock. Monday night, 6 o'clock. Tuesday night, 6 o'clock. Wednesday night, 6 o'clock. But it's nice as our speaker. He'll be speaking each time each evening. And we have some special things planned for the week you're not going to want to miss. Please come out and uh, please give us the opportunity to bless your blesser. I think we will do a good job. I know Brother Snipes did a great job last year. I don't know if, how many folks remember him or not, but uh, remember, how many remember the halls from last year? Remember the halls from last year? And uh, of course, so there, then we had, you know, somebody, a missionary who was deaf the whole time had to be interpreted to. And uh, remember the sign name they gave to Brother Snipes? Do you remember that? And uh, so that's what I think of sometimes. I think of yes. Snipes. He's the uh, he's brother. Welcome back to our kids, and uh, so he has that going. And right, now, I think Drew's taking it a little he's overboard. It. He's, he's kind of just came in and hold on. I gotta find out a room. I gotta find a door to walk through so I can do this again. Uh, Drew, that's not really the point, okay? But uh, he's good at building relationships with people. Amen. We appreciate you so much, brother. Nice. Why don't you come on up? He's gonna preach for us this time. Give him your attention, if you would. Thank you very I am very honored to be back, and yes, Drew did beat me big time this morning, and I did not see it come. I was sitting in my car, and I thought, as soon as they get out of the house, I'm going to say, welcome back, and I didn't see him, so I said, I'll just go into the service or the church and, and he'd meet with people. As soon as he came in the door, welcome back, and then I'm moving from room to room, hallway to hallway, and so I think he's beat me. I think he's probably, he's probably got the count already, but uh, I am very glad to be back. Thank you, Pastor Koblenz, for your dedication to him. Thanks for coming on a Sunday morning. Uh, in a lot of, for a lot of people, the church is not, is not important for them, but I'm glad it's important for you. And it's kind of like uh, sweet smelling savor, kind of like those muffins I smelled in the oven this morning. Thank you to uh, Brother David and Mrs. Doreen. Thanks for that this morning. Thanks for allowing me to come a third time in a row. Come on now. And uh, thank you for allowing me to stay in your beautiful home. And uh, thanks for the good chili last night and so forth. So, but I hope you can uh, come several days for the conference. I'm glad we have guests this morning. And uh, thanks for coming. Uh, I heard the best message of the week is going to be next Sunday. And so if you have a choice between this Sunday and next Sunday, come next Sunday. Um, but the pastor will be preaching then. So I'm glad that you Our pastor often says Sunday morning, he says, now if you have a choice between coming to this morning and tonight, I just think it's better that you come tonight. And of course, we're already there. We're like, oh, come on. You should have told us. No. Um, but I'm glad to be here this morning. I have the privilege of serving missionaries. And of course, just to give you a little bit of my testimony, I won't be lengthy this morning. I can't be. Uh, I'll be short. Okay. Just like kind of Brother Williams was talking about how tall he was and this and that and the other. And everything's bigger and better in Texas. And I knew as soon as he got up, he was going to talk about Texas. Yep. And so, uh, no, that's, that's all we need to know is just it's the name of a state and that's about it. So, um, nobody's from Texas, right? So it doesn't matter. Okay. Um, I'm sorry. It does. There's one. Okay. Uh, but I am very glad to be back. Thank you, Pastor Koblitz, for the opportunity. I uh, had a very busy se uh, season. I was in uh, about an hour away from our church uh, last weekend. The weekend before, I was in New York City. And then the weekend before, I was in Egypt. And the weekend before that, I was in Turkey. And so I didn't eat turkey while I was there, but I did uh, get to go to the country of Turkey. Uh, there is a great need around the world. I, I wish that as the young people, all of us young people, come on now. Uh, Brother Copas was singing, Mr. Right. Dorian was singing, I was singing. So it's all the young people up here. And I appreciate uh, those who sang. But that ought to be our goal. Lord, here am I, send me. Wherever you want me to go. And, and we, there's another song, Around the Corner or Around the World. And that ought to be your goal. I want to, go, I want to be a local Christian and I want to be a global Christian. Uh, I gave a little bit of my testimony last time I was here. But I was born with cerebral palsy. And uh, I was healed because God answers prayer. I'll just state it that way. Amen. We had a church of 500 people. Sometimes people say, I don't believe in miracles. I do. Every day that I wake up, it's a miracle. Every day that I can, my brother said that God didn't heal me. Of course, that's brothers for you, right? How many of you have brothers? Okay. I, mean, I uh, think uh, we were talking last night about if I had any sisters. I said I had three of them. I mean, they were actually brothers. But uh, I called them sisters multiple times and they called it back. But um but I, I just love what God's allowed me to do. Uh, I just, at the age of four, I got saved. I'm thankful for children's program. I stopped by the nursery and thanked the young lady who was serving in, uh, in the nursery this morning. We just had our first grandbaby. I know the way too young to be a grandparent. I know, keep the comments to yourself. Um, 
but we just had our first grandbaby two and a half months ago, and so Connor Orion, I do have just a few pictures, my whole camera reel, um, but I have a few pictures, you will see him after the service, and I texted my daughter this morning and let her know I was proud of her. So his grandparents stayed there, and so I said, I cannot be there with y'all this morning, but maybe next year for grandparents' day, and so, uh, but I am very glad to be here this morning. After getting saved at an early age, at the age of 11, God uh, really impressed upon me to surrender my life to serve Him. I grew up very shy, grew up very timid. Uh, how many of you grew up that way? Was raised your hand, just shy, timid? I just, I thought, man, there's no way I can be a preacher. There's no way I can, you know, learn a different language, different culture. And God, kind of in His own way of doing things, He said, I want you to serve me. At that point, I literally said, Here am I, Lord, send me. I don't know where you want me to go. Two years later, at the age of 13, God called me to missions. At that time, I didn't know really what missionaries did. At that time, I thought missionaries were someone that went to another culture and helped them live to a little bit higher standard, maybe helped them with their plants and maybe helped them with their food and maybe helped them to have food to eat because most of the world doesn't eat three meals a day. Most of the world doesn't eat two meals a day. There's a reason why the Bible says, give us this day our daily bread. Most of the world works all day long to get one piece of bread to share with their family. They'll do it all day long to do that, to get some sleep tonight, to do it again all day tomorrow. And that's kind of their purpose of life is just to maintain their life. We don't have that here. And most of us, how many of you eat at least one or two meals a day, maybe three meals a day? And then uh, you fast between supper and breakfast. Come on now, can I get a witness right there? Okay. <laughs> We had the privilege of serving my wife and I with the House Anderson College. In fact, the college that Brother Daniel and Miss Marianne talked about, there is a House Anderson College of the Philippines. And so I have the privilege of serving at House Anderson College, teaching missions and Bible there. And of course, your pastor graduated from there. And as I stated last year, I think obviously Brother House has been in heaven now 22 years. But I believe that what Brother House was envisioning when he started House Anderson College 52 years ago was a pastor like your pastor coming here with his wife, loving on people and just staying faithful to the Lord, staying faithful to each other and, and having missions conferences like this, I believe. Not only would Brother Howell be very proud, but I believe God would tell us, says, I'm thrilled that my son's obeying what I've asked him to do. Aren't you glad for your pastor this morning? Amen. And uh, he didn't ask me to say that, but uh, uh, I thank the Lord for friends and friendships. I think those, the, I'm thankful to the Lord for those who stayed faithful. My wife and I served in Mexico for two years. My wife and I served in Peru for three years, deputation for two years. I know a little bit about what the Williams did. We drove 114,000 miles in 32 states in just a little over three, uh, just a little over two years. I started a church in Peru. The church in Peru has been phenomenal. Uh, every picture that I see, they're winning people to Christ. They're out and about street preaching, and just God's been very gracious. And then uh, my wife's health got to where we had to come back off the field in 2006. I was asked to teach at House Anderson College 17 years ago. And then about a year after that, uh, one of my leaders said, would you be willing to serve missionaries with FBMI? There are a lot of great mission agencies out there. FBMI uh, is a mission agency that's uh, out of our local church. We have about 111 missionary families all over the world. And uh, God has been very, very gracious to us. And I get the privilege of, I've traveled to 28 countries. Uh, several of those countries I've been several different times. Uh, but I'm very glad to be here this morning. Uh, this, this, this missions conference is kind of a business meeting. The church is saying, this is what we're going to do for missions this next year. Now, missions isn't all about money, but it does cost money. You know the Bible you have costs money? You know the church building you have costs money? You know the pews that you're sitting on costs money? Uh, you know the flags that you have? You know everything that is worth doing costs money, Right. And so there is a need there. And so we're going to talk a little bit about money. But we're not just going to talk about money. I felt bad. I was in a uh, missions, uh, missions Sunday two, uh, two weeks ago in New York City. And there was a, a couple that came in. They were visiting. And I felt horrible because I was just talking about the tithe. Don't give your, don't give your uh, tithe to missions. You need to pay God your tithe first. And uh, I don't know if they got offended by it. But around that time, they got up and walked out. And I was like, oh. I told the pastor. I said, I'm sorry. I, was just, I wasn't even to my, really to my message yet. And uh, he said, he said, that's okay. He said, I'm not sure they were looking for our kind of a church, uh, but uh, I'm thankful for that church. That church is a church of about 30, 30 members, and they support 57 missionaries. And uh, I, I was just amazing to see what God's doing there. It's amazing to see what y'all are doing here. I looked at the missions list and very thankful to just be a part of it. I'm going to go to probably the most familiar verse that you've ever heard of. People put it on signs. 
People put it underneath their eyelids as they play football, and yes, you can tell I've played football before. And uh, no comments there, okay. And don't laugh, please laugh, okay. And uh, somebody like, really, you played, okay. And I, I like football, and I enjoy, we, we watched a little bit. How many of you let Ohio State won yesterday? Come on now, make sure a better Sunday, right? And uh, so look with me at John 3.16 this morning. John 3.16. I am glad to have the Williams here. They were a vital part of our, our Sunday school class, uh, the one that I missed this morning. I've only missed it five out of the last six weeks, and then summertime, I only missed it eight out of ten weeks. And so they may have another teacher when I get back. I don't know, but uh, I'm glad to be here. Mrs. Mary Ann was in charge of our uh, kitchen, and that's an important part of our class. Come on now. And uh, so she helped with that, but Daniel Williams was a vital part of our class and taught for it sometimes. And so I'm glad uh, y'all begin to know these, this missionary family. They're leaving in a month. And mo how many of you have never been to the Philippines? Raise your hand. Okay, I've not been to the Philippines. How many of you have been to the Philippines? Okay. One, two. Okay. And so uh, you can go to the Philippines by way of the Williams family. You can decide, I want to pray with them, I want to pray for them, I want to, I want to support them financially, and talk with your pastor, and, and, but God does love the world. That's a very simple message. I had several messages I wanted to bring to you this morning, and God said bring this one. So I'm going to bring the one God wants me to bring, since he's the reason why I'm here, right? He's the re reason why I breathe, he's the reason why my heart keeps beating, he's the reason why I have a voice this morning, he's the reason why I got uh, to go a little bit through rain, and then no rain, and then rain, and no rain. How many of you feel it's been a rain, rainy season a little bit the last couple of days? And now, now the sun's out, we're in the service, come on up. And, but John 3.16, would you just read it with me this morning? John 3.16 Probably the most well-known verse, if you could go to one verse in the Bible, that most of the world has heard, or if they've heard of a verse, they've definitely heard of this one. Would you look at John 3, 16 and read it with me? It says this, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. And let's read it one more time. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. As a young man that have been that I've been saved now 42 years, I'm glad that God loves the world. And God loves Little Hawking, and God loves the area here, and God loves the cities around here, and God loves Ohio. I can't, I don't know if God loves Ohio State. Some of you would say yes. I don't know, okay. I can't say that about God, but apparently he he helped him out yesterday, you know. They gave him the energy and the strength and so forth. And practice was a big part of that. Everybody still with me this morning. Oswald J. Smith said the supreme task of the church is the evangelization of the world. Uh, again, we're here to work and we're here to work with our families and myself with our three, my wife and I with our three children and now our grandbaby. We want to do all that we can, but I want to do all I can while I still have breath around this world. Sad story. Two weeks ago, my son had gone to Texas. Speaking of Texas. I think there's only two or three people down there, but uh, speaking of Texas, just joking. Uh, speaking of Texas, he went out with some friends down in Texas. Uh, this has been now about four weeks ago, and he came back, and the next week, that one of the 21-year-old young men that my son went to visit had passed away. And I thought of that, and I thought, man, I wonder, that 21-year-old probably thought he had his entire life ahead of him. He probably thought, I've got 40 more years, 50 more years to live with him. The, the truth is this morning, none of us have a guarantee of tomorrow. That's why, you know, if Jesus comes back this morning, I'd rather be in church than somewhere else. Come on now. Amen. If Jesus comes back this evening, I'd rather be in church and then at the meal. Come on, I won't miss the meal either. Okay, I'll be in church and I'll be at the meal because I'm just trying to make sure that I have the sustenance that I need to preach, all right? Amen. But I'm going to go through several ver several uh, several words in this verse and I'm going to stop at several uh, words and I'll give you several verses. We'll get out at regular time. But I want you to listen this morning. The first word that I'd like to stop at is the word God. Now, most of the world doesn't look at God, the same God that you and I look at. But I believe it's God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. I believe in the Trinity this morning. I believe that God is the creator in the beginning. God created the heaven and the earth. And as I saw the beautiful hills of Ohio, and this summer I got to travel to 42 churches on tour. I traveled six and a half weeks all the way from uh, Missouri down to Texas. And then I went out to California, Oregon, Washington, Idaho, Montana, Wyoming, Colorado, and then flew back out of Denver. And as I did that, I saw the mountains and I saw the seas and I saw the valleys and I saw the hills and I said, what a God, what a God. 
Now, I've seen a lot of buildings, and I've seen a lot of places that man has built, but man can't compare to what God has already built. What a God we serve this morning. Amen. But as I was in Istanbul, the Istanbul airport, is, it was named last year the world's uh, best international airport. Pretty amazing airport. Ladies, you'd like it. It's like there's huge malls in there. There's shopping in there. You probably won't want to buy anything, but at least you could go window shopping because everything was pricey. The, my lunch was about $15 or $20, and I didn't get much. I got something to eat and a drink. The coffee that I got was $8 in the airport there. A little expensive. But I sat down, and I sat down beside a young lady. I could tell that she was around my daughter's age. And as I sat down, I said, can I ask you a couple questions? It was obvious that she was a Muslim lady. And as I saw her and as I talked with her, I said, where are you from? She said, I'm from Saudi Arabia. She said, I live in Jordan. She said, I'm here because I'm heading to Cyprus for college. She said, I'm finishing my last degree. And I said, you date anybody? She said, yeah, I'm going back to see my boyfriend. He's part of the college there in Cyprus. I said, can you wait to get back? She said, no, big, she beamed. I can't wait to get back and see him. And I just asked her a simple question. I said, I know you don't think much about this. And maybe nobody's ever asked this before, but what's going to happen after death? And she said, it really depends on where Allah sends me. And I said, where do you think Allah's going to send you? She said, I don't know. That's what I'm concerned about. And so I gave her, I can't give out tracts. We're talking about tracts. I can't give out tracts in Turkey, but we have missionaries there or foreign workers. We can't call them missionaries in Turkey, so we call them foreign workers. They have QR codes. And so I handed her one, and she immediately put it on her phone, and it has the Turkish Bible. They pay $10,000 to have an actor uh, speak through the entire Bible and put it online so that people that can't get tracks, they get it. And I, it works like it works like a charm. You give somebody a QR code, they don't know what it is, they immediately take out their phone to find out what it is. And missionaries are being used by that, that way to see many people come to Christ. I also had the privilege while I was in Turkey. And we're talking about what a, what a great God, and it's not the same God. God. Allah is not the same as our God. I'll leave that alone. I'm not going to go into all that. But you don't have to battle that with somebody. You just talk about it. And they realize Jesus was a prophet. They realize Jesus, Moses was a prophet. They, they're a monotheistic uh, religion. I got to talk to two Muslims out of the meal. They brought me to the airport. and uh, They actually brought me to the bus station, not to the airport. And uh, neither one of them are saved. One of them have been, has been to church many times. He told me he's read the Bible through many times. He said, but I still don't believe it. He said, and then after I gave him the gospel, he said, you've given me a lot to think about. The other one said, I'm not a religious at all. I've never read the Bible, but you've given me a lot to think about. And they sat with me at the bus station. And I said, y'all can leave. I'm fine. And they said, no. He said, the thing about us is that we love other people more than we love ourselves. He said, we're going to sit here till you get on the bus. And so almost like a kid, I'm 46, but almost like a kid, I sat on the bus and I waved to them out in the window. And they're like, you know, waving to me like it was dad saying bye to son and son saying bye to dad. And I met them for the one time. And I said, well, when you're ready to get the gospel, here's what. Here's what the Bible says, and so I gave them the QR code, and they know about the gospel. But he also is not only the creator, not only the trinity, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, but he's also our redeemer. He created us, and then he bought us back. And I'm not sure why he did, but I'm glad he did. Amen. The story, I don't know that I've told it here, but it's a great story, and I was not the little boy in the story. Although I feel like a little boy sometimes, but not the little boy in the story. The little boy bought a, or made a sailboat, carved it, made it. Got it selling, and he put it on, out on the little creek there, and then a little bit, he got a little bit more adventurous, and he put it out on the river. And as he put it on the river one day, he had a little string to kind of pull it back, but he lost he lost grip of the string. The boat went down, and he tried all day long to find the boat. And it's weeks later, he went by a store, and just sure enough, as he saw in the window of the store, he saw that boat. He walked in, he said, Mr., I'm so glad you held my boat for me. I'm glad you have my boat. He said, I came back to get my boat this morning. And that man said, I don't know what you're talking about. Somebody came in here and gave me the boat. I, I sold the boat to him, and, or, or he sold the boat to me. I bought it from him, and it's my boat. If you want, you're going to have to buy it back. The boy said, you don't understand. I'm the one that made this boat. I can, he said, if you look right here, my initials are on the boat. I'm, I'm the, I can tell you where I got the wood. I can tell you where I got the cloth. I can tell you all about it. He said, I don't care what you tell me. He said, you can have it if you pay for it. And that boy did work with enough money, and he said, just save the boat for me. And he, he had not only made the boat, but then he had to buy it back. God not only has created us, but then he loved us so much on the cross. He died on the cross with his sinless blood. Your my blood is not, our blood is not sinless, but his blood is sinless because he's God and he's God's son. Everybody still with me this morning? Amen. And he died on the cross and he went to the grave and he up from the grave he arose and he bought us back. 
What a God. The second word this morning, the second phrase this morning is so loved. The Bible says in Romans 5, that God committed his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. I don't know why he, he loved us so much, but I'm glad he did. I'm glad he did. First John chapter 4, would you look there with me? First John chapter 4, I want to have us turn to all the passages this morning. But look at First John chapter 4. First John chapter 4, near the end of the Bible. First John chapter 4, verses 9 and 10. First John 4, 9 and 10 says, In this was manifested the love of God toward us, because that God sent his only begotten Son into the world, that we might live through him, here in his love. Not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the propitiation for our sin. Titus 3, 4 says, but after that, the kindness and love of God, our Savior, toward man appeared. Story that I read last night, and I don't know if it would be a true story. It was a great story, but I don't know if it's true or not, so if it's not true, I'm not sure, but I read the story last night. I read the story of a young boy in it, and he got ready. It was a Saturday. It was their regular day of going soul winning, their regular day of talking to people about Christ. It was their regular day of being a local Christian, working with those locally, like a missionary would look on the, work on the foreign field, working locally with people. And so he got his shoes on, and he said, Dad, I'm ready. And the dad said, it's raining outside. It's cold outside. And man, we're going to have to wait for some other day. And the boy said, we got to go out today. we got to get out there. we got to pass out some tracks. we got to knock on some doors today. And the dad said, I don't want to go, but you're welcome to go if you want to. And he said, it's cold, it's rainy. And an 11-year-old boy went out that day and for two hours out in the rain and nobody really paid him any attention. He looked down and he had one track left. And he grabbed that track and he said, man, I, Lord, would you just tell me where to go? And would you tell me where, where, who needs the track the most? And he saw a house on the corner and he said, I'm just going to go knock on the door. And he knocked on the door. Nobody answered the door. So he knocked a little bit louder and nobody answered the door. And he rang the doorbell and he about walked away from the door. I'll give him one more chance. And he knocked on the door and the lady came to the door and she looked like the saddest lady that he'd ever met in his entire life. As he looked at that lady, the lady said, I'm, what can I help you with? And he said, I just wanted to give you some good news and I wanted to tell you that God loves you. That next Sunday, guess who showed up in church? That lady did. That lady showed up in church and she said, I came for, the pastor was asking for testimonies and the lady said, I came this morning because I wanted to meet the angel that came by my house yesterday. Where's that angel at? And she saw the boy and she said, you're the one. She said, yesterday I was in despair. She said, I, I had despaired of even life itself. She said, I was going to take my own life yesterday. I won't go through the details, but she had prepared everything that she needed. And she said, about that time, I heard the door knock. And she said, I'll just let it, I'll just let it pass. And then she said, I heard the door knock again. And she said, don't go away. And then she said, I heard the doorbell ring. And she said, no. He'll go wait a few minutes. She said, and about two minutes later, the door knocked again. I thought, I need to go see who's at the door. She said, yesterday, if I would have died, I know I would have died and gone to hell. But today, because of what Jesus did for me, I know I'm going to heaven. Amen. I don't know about you, but I know that God loves us this morning. I'm not sure where you're at this morning. I said, number one, the word God. I gave us the word so loved. I gave, then the world. The world has over 8 billion people, 195 countries with other 60 independent areas. 105 people die every minute. Almost two per second die. In contrast, 259 people are born every minute. So about two people die every second and about four people are born every second. That's why the world's getting so much larger in such a greater, uh, in, in, in greater in such a short time. One out of four has yet to hear the gospel. There are 17,000 different ethnic groups. There are over 7,000 of them still unreached. Out of every dollar given to missions, less than a penny is given to the unreached people of the world. And there's unreached people all over the world. In every country, there's unreached people. Oswald Smith said, we talk of the second coming, but the world has never, uh, many, of the, many people in the world have never heard of the first. The gospel is only good news if it gets there on time. We must be a global Christian with a global vision because we have a global God. So we're talking about the world. We'll talk about the world later on this week. But for sake of time, let me move on this morning. We talked about how for God so loved the world that he gave. You've heard the quote before. I've heard the quote before. You can give without loving, but you cannot love without 
giving. My wife's birthday is this week. I'll miss it on Wednesday, but it's a birthday month, so I'm celebrating all month long. I gave her roses last week, and I think the best candle, the Yankee candles ever made is fresh cut roses. That way I don't have to buy roses anymore. I'm just joking about that, okay? I'm just joking. You men are like, man, that's a good one. Write that one down. I got her roses. Don't worry, I got her roses last week. About time to get them again. And sometimes, sometimes I need to give her roses. Can I get a witness, guys? Okay. And sometimes I just give it to her because I love her, all right? I feel like the first part is where I, where I find myself so often. God gave. Bible said, Mark chapter 12 and verse 6, having yet therefore one son, his well beloved, he sent him un last unto them, saying, They will reverence my son. A great parable there, but speaking of Jesus Christ. Romans 8 32 says, He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? If God was willing to give us his son, could you imagine? Listen with me this morning. I'm almost through with the message, but could you imagine if God would not have sent his son? Could you imagine if God wouldn't have sent his spirit? Could you imagine if God wouldn't have given us his word? Could you imagine if God wouldn't have sent you his pa the pastor that he wanted you to have? Could you imagine if God wouldn't have given us a church? God loved us so much that he gave. And I'm glad he did this morning. Who did he give? He gave his only begotten son. A lot of other versions decided to take out the only begotten, and they just say his son. But I believe that, and I don't have time to go into all of that this morning. But I'm glad he was born of a virgin. Amen. Can I get a witness right there? Amen. It's a miraculous birth. What a God we have this morning. Amen. David Livingston said God only had one son, and he gave him to be a missionary. So often we look, and I want to have my kids nearby and I want kids to do this and I want and God said you know what we're gonna have to, I'm gonna have to ask you son you're gonna have to leave the streets of gold you're gonna have to go on there because I love the world so much I want to give you for them the word whosoever is the next word it, it means all it means any as it means every every boy girl mom dad lay man lady brother sister aunt uncle grandpa come on now witness right there how many grandparents we have in here yeah I get to join the club now let's continue here okay Long hair, short hair, or no hair. Okay, everybody still with me this morning? Don't look at me like that, okay? <laughs> White, black, brown, red, yellow, pink, rich, poor, live in the city, live in the country, live in the U.S., live somewhere else. North America, Central America, South America, Europe, Africa, Asia, one of the islands. That's whosoever. Whosoever believes in him should not perish but have, ever, uh, have eternal life. It says John 3, uh, 15. Uh, Romans chapter 10, verse 13. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. The next word is the word believe it. Believe it. Oh. Mark chapter 16, verses 15 and 16 says, He said unto them, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. That doesn't mean you believe and you get baptized and you're saved. That means if you believe, then the next step would be baptized. Otherwise, it would say, He that believeth and is not baptized shall be damned. It's just... He that believeth shall uh, not, not shall be damned. I'm glad this morning that I believed in Jesus Christ. I'll give you one story. I've got several other stories. I'll give you one story. And then the last uh, phrase there that I want to mention is, should not perish, but have everlasting life. I'm glad that I don't have to perish somewhere. I'm glad I don't have to die. I'm glad that uh, once I accepted Jesus Christ, I accepted him for good. Everlasting life is lasting. It's enduring forever. It's continuing without end. It's perpetual. I'm glad that I have everlasting life. I'm glad there's nothing I can do to lose salvation this morning. I'm glad that he paid it all. It's a done religion in the sense of you can either do what you want to do or you can trust in what's already done. I don't need to do what I, I want to do. I need to do. I need to realize that he's already done it all. Amen. And because he's done it all, that's why I come to missions conferences. That's why I pass out tracts. That's why last Saturday, uh, while I'll give you two big illustrations and I'm done. Last Saturday, I was out soul winning. And uh, first visit, we just got there, got out of the vehicle, and I saw a lady sitting out in the front store there. And I thought, man, I gotta go to the street. We got a map, we're gonna cover an area. And the Holy Spirit said, I waved to her and she waved back and the Holy Spirit said, there she is. And I was like, there who is? Like, who are you talking to? He's like, go talk with her. And so I did, I went up to her and I said, hey, just a, just a question for you. How sure are you that you're going to heaven? 50%, 70%, 80%? She said, maybe 50%. I said, you don't want to stay that way, do you? She said, no, not really, but I don't know how to get saved. And I said, well, I do. Can I share with you from the Bible how you can get saved? And she said, yes, she trusted Christ as Savior. I said, how? I said, where do you live? You live around here? She said, I know I live six hours away in Evansville, Indiana. I said, why are you here? She said, I'm here for a tortilla maker. We're talking in Spanish. I'm here for, and I said, well, why are you waiting? She said, well, for some reason, the tortilla maker wasn't ready when I came. Can't imagine that. Why was it not ready? Amen. 
And I said, how long will you be here? She said, today, we came here to get the tortilla and we're going to bring her right back to, it, to Evansville. She said, we'll drove up this morning, we'll drive back this afternoon. I thought, what a God. That just happened to be the area we were at. She's only going to be there for a few more minutes. It happened to be late. Sometimes late is not, sometimes late means that God's just doing something behind the scenes. Come on now. Amen. Give you one more story. I was talking to Crepo, a uh, young man in, actually older man in uh, Texas. Another mission in Texas. You're trying to keep other leaders Amen. with us this morning. Just trying to honor our missionary, okay? <laughs> met, met a man named Cre Crepo. I began to witness to him. He didn't know for sure he was going to heaven. I remember Crepo bowing his head and trusting Christ as Savior. And then I'll never, I've never had a story quite like this one where I, as I begin to walk away, he said, sir, can I stop you again? I said, sure. He said, you mean, you mean I was heading to hell and now I get to go to heaven? He said, you mean I was going to die and without you coming and telling me about Jesus, I was going to spend an eternity in hell? I said, that's what the Bible says. He just looked at me and he said, I don't know how to thank you, but I don't see you again. Just thank you for what you do. There's a lot of people in this area that need the gospel, but more than that, there's a lot of people around the world. Amen. This week, we're going to talk about missions. Or this week, we're going to talk about how can we get the gospel to them. Say, so how can I do my part? Well, first of all, if you're here this morning, you're not saved. Today's a good day to get saved. Amen. Amen. If you are saved, then you ought to say, man, what can I do for missions? Well, you can pray for missionaries. You can right. give systematically every single week to missions. You could go as a missionary. I'd love to see some people from this church go as missionaries. It takes a little work, takes a little effort, takes some training. I know that several have been stirred in the last three years in regards to mission. I'm going to ask you to bow your head and close your eyes this morning. I'm going to ask you to bow your head and close your eyes. Thank you for your listening this morning with your head bowed, your eyes closed. I'm going to ask you to stand if you would this morning. Would you stand with me this morning? Would you stand up with me this morning? I'm going to ask you a couple questions. First question, how many of you say, I know for sure I'm going to heaven beyond a shadow of a doubt. I put my faith and trust in Jesus. Would you slip your hand up? I know I'm saved. I know I'm saved. I know I'm saved. You can put your hands down this morning. Is there anyone here that you'd say, I don't know that for sure, but I sure would like to know that. I sure would like to know. If somebody can share with me, I'd like to know how to get saved. Would you pray for me? Would there be anyone like that? I don't know for sure I'm saved. I have doubts about it, but I'd like to know. Slip your hand up. I'll pray for you. Slip your hand up. Anyone like that? I don't know for sure I'm saved. Anyone like that this morning? How many of you say this morning, I want to do my part. I want to do the praying that I'm going to try the best I can to be a part of this conference. I want to be there. Uh, Lord willing, I want, to, I want to come back. I want to learn what God has for us tonight. I want to come back and learn Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday what God has for us. But I want to do my part, I, whether that's praying, whether that's giving, whether that's going locally or going globally. I want to do my part. Would you slip your hand up? I want to do my part. Would you slip your hand up? I'm all in. I'm all in. I'm going to ask while the piano plays this morning. I'm going to ask if you want to come forward. Maybe you want to dedicate yourself for the conference. Come forward and say, I'm in. Uh, God loved me, but God loves you. Why don't you step out of your seat right now as the piano plays? Why don't you step out of the seat, young man, young lady, older man, older lady? Why don't you step out and say, I want to do my part for the conference. I want to pray for the conference. I want to give for the conference. I want to, I want to support the conference. I'm going to give us a few moments here. Just step out and just go to your knees and say, Lord, I'm, I'm in. I want to do what I can. I want to. I want to help missionaries get to the foreign field. I want to help those who are on the foreign field. I want to. I want to. I want to do my part to see this world come to know you as Savior. I want to do my part. Maybe if you're not able to come forward, maybe you ought to kneel where you're at or sit down where you're at and ask the Lord, Lord, I want, show me what to do. I'm willing to do it. I want to do what you want. I'm willing to pray. I'm willing to give. I'm willing to do my part locally, whether it's passing out tracks or knocking on doors or going soul winning. And I'll do what I can in regards to the need around the world. There's needs all around the world. Oh, that we would go and, and ask the Lord, Lord, what would you have me to do? Eight billion people. Eight billion people. Probably two million, two billion that don't even know the gospel yet. Probably a fourth of our world doesn't know the gospel yet. Great need. Let's do our part. Let's continue to moment of prayer. You can be seated. We're going to continue on here. Just got a few announcements, but uh, let me just say, that's that's a snippet of what you're going to get this week, okay? Uh, you're going to have your heart challenged, and uh, you're going to have your faith challenged. You're going to have the Word of God preached to you and the principles of the Word of God, and I think this is, this is one of the most encouraging parts of, of our year here at the Baptist Church. 
I'm, I'm encouraged when I hear the stories and I hear the testimonies and I see the, uh, the projections of where in the world God is doing some works and God is changing lives. Um, this, is, this is something that I wouldn't want to miss at all. And so if you want to be encouraged about what's going on in the world, make sure that you're here for each of these opportunities and our services. Again, uh, tonight, 6 o'clock, right after that, we'll be having our international dinner. And uh, right after, then tomorrow, then, let me make sure I got my notes out here so I don't forget anything. Um, the, the, of course, the conference, the services of the conference, every single night, Monday night, Tuesday night, Wednesday night, 6 p.m., right? And then tomorrow, uh, the ladies will have a fellowship at noon, okay? And so another chance to get, get in touch with these missionaries, anybody that's here. Um, we'll be there for that, the ladies' fellowship. There is food, of course. And then the prime timers, they're going to have their activity uh, this month on Tuesday. And so Tuesday at noon, uh, where there's time to give a devotion there, and there'll be a time of fellowship. Bring your own drink, as it says there in the bulletin. Don't forget about that. And then, of course, Wednesday night, the final night of the uh, conference, 6, 6 o'clock p.m. Did you have one thing you wanted to mention there? Tuesday with the prime timers is pizza. Tuesday is pizza. Oh, I'm bringing the pizza. Amen. You won't come for pizza, what will you come for? Right? That's good. All righty, so uh, then of course Saturday is our normal visitation day, 10 o'clock a.m. It's church-wide visitation, of course, and you can see in the bulletin some other things uh, coming up. And uh, so pray about what God wants you to do. Pray about it, make it a matter of prayer. Let's all stand if you would, please. Thank you for being here, I appreciate that. Brother Perry's gonna pray for this Dear Lord, have a gracious follow, Lord. We thank you for your goodness, your grace, your mercy, Lord. We thank you for the privilege it is to, to be in a church, Lord, where we can hear from your word, the, the truth of the gospel, the truth of what you would have us to do now that we know you as Savior, Lord, and help us to be obedient to your word. Lord, we thank you, Lord, that you do love us, Lord, that you came to die on the cross for us, Lord. We thank you for those that go around the world and throughout our community, Lord, spreading the light of the gospel.